finally giving y'all the updated closure unit construction video. As y'all can tell, I already have the measurements done. I have the lace hand sewn and I got the guidelines done. I am working with four of my natural wavy raw Indonesian bundles. This unit is a custom pre-order for my Black Friday sale. So I thought it was the best time to go ahead and get this video recorded. But while I go ahead and take the bundles apart, I just want to throw out a little FYI. In this video, I do not um, pre-double my webs. So if you want to go ahead and do that, you can. So I would just say this part is a little advanced. In case you don't know how to do it but it's not that hard y'all y'all see it's very self-explanatory but i just want to throw that out there because the webs will not be pre-double as i'm going through the construction part so if you want to go ahead and pre-double your webs before watching me go ahead and do that but i just want to throw that out there that way y'all can be aware so the first thing i want to do is sew in my wig tag and a comb I put both of these in the back of every wig unless the customer requests no comb but my logo will be in the wig no matter if it's with my hair or not I like to brand my units so as you can see I'm just gonna go on around each corner and just sew it down and then once I get to the very bottom like the correct way where you see the collection part that's when I'll go ahead and add the comb <laughs> This is the part where I add the comb. I just make sure it's across the whole bottom of the logo. That way that part can still lay down because I am not going over it individually. I'm going over it as I'm sewing the comb. This is how it should look after you're done. You have your wig logo in your comb in the back of every wig. I don't care who it is, who it's for. Bring your wig that way people know it is your work. So now it's time to get into the construction. I just put the cap on the machine and put the footer down to hold it while I get my bundles together. Once you unravel the bundle, you basically want to um, start at the two loose ends and that will be the part that you will start at no matter if you're pre-doubling the webs or not. You want to always start with those loose ends when they fold over and meet with each other. As y'all can see, I am placing those two loose ends at the very beginning of the cap. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my footer down and start sewing. You want to go ahead and make sure that you reverse at the beginning and the end of every track. That way you know it's secure. So I'm zooming in so I can see a little better. Hopefully it's close enough for y'all. But start sewing and once you kind of get maybe like an inch through, that's when you will start reversing. I normally like to reverse one or two times but as y'all can see it got a little thick. So I just did it two times and kept going. Once you go through the rest of the track and you get to the end, go ahead and cut those bundles. That way it's out your way. And then you're going to go ahead and just sew down, reverse it multiple times. That way it's secure. And then you're ready to move on to the next bundle. Not doubling the wheels beforehand saved me so much time and so much thread. So I highly recommend. But that's why I say it's a little bit more advanced. If you're a beginner, pre your webs until you get comfortable with your machine and making the units. Well, I always cut all my excess thread as I go that way I don't forget but this is how your first track should look very neat and clean and this is the inside and again very neat and clean I am big on having a neat construction I have OCD so everything have to be perfect but you should want your client to receive a perfect wig they're spending money with you so make sure they get their money worth but I'm going to go ahead and do another track on camera and then after that, once I get to the top, I'll be back. Yeah, I know I come through with the angles, so this is a better view of me just reversing at the very end and moving on to the very next track. Yeah. 
I also like this view because y'all can see what I mean when I say I didn't pre-double the welts beforehand. And it's basically like you're going to double the welts, but you just didn't. You want both of the tracks to sit like right underneath each other, exactly how I'm showing y'all. And all you gotta do is just keep them together the whole time. So it's very easy. That's why I say it may seem like it's advanced, but it can be beginner friendly if you've been working on the machine already and you're comfortable. So if you was to ever run out of hair and you have to complete the track, this is the part that you need to watch. So basically end it off as if you were at the end, meaning reverse it and secure it to the bottom. Once you go ahead and get the other track ready, you're basically just going to place them close together and you're going to start sewing and reverse it to basically secure it as if you were doing the beginning and the ending of the web. So it's basically the same thing throughout the uni, y'all. Like it's nothing special. It's just one of those things like once you get comfortable, you get in your groove, you just keep going. Say I see I'm attaching them and I'm going to sew forward. Once I get a little pass, I'm going to just reverse it and secure it together and I'm going to show y'all the outcome at the end. I'm supporting this shit. This is a story that came from my life, and I'm just recording this shit. I'ma just give it to you. So this is how it look. It's no gap in this one, but it's okay if you have a small gap, y'all. It's not a big deal. It's in the back of the wig. They're not looking that hard. Now I am approaching the top where the closure is at. And you're going to do the same thing. The only thing is that you want to get as close as possible to the closure. That way you have no gap in between your lace and your bundles. And you're just going to go ahead and just do it around the whole closure. And then I'm going to also show y'all how to do the elastic band. So now I'm about to sew the elastic band. I placed my band 
underneath that first track that's close to the closure that's just the way i like to place it i feel like it's not as harsh on you know the client on their edges or anything like that it's in the right position to basically hold the wig down by the lace and when you're doing it to the other side make sure you curve your elastic band to basically shape around the inside of the cap that way it is not twisted We have reached the end of this video. This is basically how that last track looks around the closure. And then I'm going to also show y'all the elastic band in the inside of the wig. Like I said, I've been doing this for a couple years, so it's nothing for me. But I hope this video will help y'all for real, for real. If not, go check out my older video and then come back to this one. And you can compare to both. Bye, y'all.